Yeah, and welcome, welcome, welcome once again with the great Tom Bukovac. Hi, Brent. How are you, sir? How are you doing, man? You good? I mean, you know, Thanks it's, for it's a good day. Thanks for having me, man. Any, any day I got you in my living room is a good day. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> right, thank you. Man. I'm going to leave all of Tom's links down below. Tom and I are going to start doing a bunch of stuff together. So put your requests down in the links below of what you would like to see yes. lessons on. We've got a ton of stuff coming your way. It's going to be freaking oh, epic. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, one of the things people are going to ask about is your picking hand because oh, it's freaking terrifying. Thank you, man. Being um, a fan of Steve Morris, I presume. Yeah, we, uh, that's right. He was one of the main guys I listened to growing up. Yeah. And I, I always loved his uh, relentless flat picking. You know, Dude. just like it's not his style. Like, there's a lot of guys who have been able to play fast with a very legato style with a lot of gain, mm -hmm. which is very cool and yep. very impressive. You know, and it's like. But I always thought his style of uh, just flat picking every note oh, did right it. in your face. All alternate picking too. Yeah, which is and crazy. all alternate picking was very cool. So so I just started down that road, you know, um, and just took me decades to get this together. I was just saying to Brett a minute ago, you know, it's like it's like it's it's very difficult to get to that place. But if you just keep hammering away and going and going and going, you you can get there, you know, and and like. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about that style on my channel and stuff like that, and, and like I've tried to explain it the best I could. Yeah. But without one of the things I, I always thought would be cool is if I had a GoPro camera. Mm, sure. Like, look down because people have asked like, well, how are you holding the pick and what angle and stuff you're at, and, and I really can't explain it. A couple things I can explain. Okay. okay. I'll show the camera here. Oh, it, it'll pick it up. Do it, do it on it this one. Yeah, do it on this We got cameras one. everywhere. <laughs> uh, so, like, yeah, uh, the pick, right? You know, um, I I don't do that thing that, that Eddie Van Halen did where I hold, with the, I hold with the index finger. And when I'm trying to play fast, I found that it's easier to get real smooth if I play with the shoulder or the pick, right? Oh, interesting. Yeah, so like, I don't use the point. I'm trying to get it on this camera. There it is, okay? Yeah, or this uh, one works too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I get the shoulder. Pull it back and then they'll see it. Yeah, there you go. There you, there go. you go. Good focus. So you can do that. You can play with the point, but I've found personally that it's a lot fast, okay. faster with you. For some reason, it just makes it smoother. And like um, people say, do you anchor your fingers and all that? Okay. You know? uh, my, I don't really know. Like, like. <laughs> I got loosely, <laughs> loosely anchored. As they're just flopping sort of on the pick guard. But your uh, your hand, your wrist does like a like a turning. Yeah, um, motions to get this thing to show it. Yeah. So what I've said to people is like it's not the way that I play is not up and down. Okay. It, with the wrist, it's it's sort of a uh, turning the wrist motion, right? And the key to it all. And I cannot stress this more than and you know what I'm going to say, man. It's just, you cannot tense up. You have to be super loose. Okay. Like, really loose. Yeah. Like, all of this stuff. Like, you even could, your. You could knock grip? this pick right out of my hand. Grip, too? Oh, yeah. I'm mean, barely holding it. Okay. So, uh, the, it's, the human tendency is when you get excited and you know you have a fast flurry of notes coming up that you have to play to just. You know, you're like waiting to hit a baseball. It's coming 100 miles an hour. <laughs> totally. And you're super tensed up, you know? Okay. That's what I struggled with for, for decades, you know? I would always, like, I could do it in rehearsal, mm -hmm. but as soon as the tape was rolling, sure. you had to get that. I couldn't do it. Because you, 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 you get too excited and, and you're, you rush and all that stuff. All the tendencies that we have, you know, it's like you rushing is, a, is the biggest one, you know? So I've just tried to get to this sort of zen place where I, I could get super relaxed like up here especially like you, you've got um just zero tension like i could do this <laughs> There's zero tension, right? <laughs> sure, sure. It's a, it, like there's, it never gets tight. See, I see people when they try to play fast, they tense up and they're good for about 10 or 12 notes and then they're done. You know what's interesting is uh, 
you move more than I think that you would. Like your, your wrist actually is right. moving like pretty far in each direction. <laughs> Okay, okay, so is there something that, wait, this is, okay, this is awesome, but is there something that you did to start getting that together? Yeah, I would take, um, I would take little, little four note, five note, six note, sort of repeating patterns and sort of, it's annoying, let's face it. I mean, it's okay, I mean, you gotta like, do something like, to yeah, get there. Like, like, I do it now as more of just a, a way to keep my hands moving. Okay, I always think about, do you remember the movie Robocop? Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. I have one of my all-time favorite movies. You remember when he got shot to pieces and they and he was trying to put himself together in that warehouse and, and his guns were all out of alignment and stuff <laughs> and he was trying to like get his guns back on top. Okay, right, right. That's how I feel in the morning when I wake up. Okay, <laughs> uh, I think about it every day. Like, if I don't play for a couple of days, my whole alignment starts to go. Okay. And, and what I, I mean, I, even as annoying as this fast picking is, to most people, it's not musical, and I understand that. And I and I've clearly made a point to show people that this is not what I play all the time. I do this to keep, you know, uh, the the gun sharp, so, sure. so that when you need it, it's yeah, there. it's there, right? And and like I found that if you can play difficult stuff effortlessly, then you can play easy stuff really effortlessly, and it sounds so free and natural because you're not struggling with it, right? Right. So. I would take these, you know, like I was just doing a minute ago, like a real simple one that you can start doing. Okay. Is uh, is just like a six note. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, D, E flat, D, C, A, G, right? In the key of A, just straight blues with a flat five, okay? And you start on the downstroke. So that is just like your real <laughs> standard one. Okay, and it seems it's silly, I know. No, it's know. terrifying is what it is. It's not silly at all. It's silly, and it doesn't sound great. And, and, but it's it, every once in a while, if you throw a little flurry dude, in the middle of a cool room. Hey, don't be ashamed it's gonna, of burning, dude. <laughs> and it's also, all good. <laughs> I'm ashamed of my burning. Okay? Don't be ashamed. I'm ashamed. People will love it. And so, so like... But but I've also thought it was cool that you that you can get to the point where you could do it with a clean amp. You know, oh, dude, totally. Get. Like we have hardly any gain. Yeah. And uh, my only crutch really is a bit of reverb. Yeah. Really, but if you can't do this stuff on a clean amp with a janky tone, then you can't do it. Yeah, it's true. So uh, if you have to have the distortion to get all your burning stuff together, then you're not doing it right. Okay. I feel. Yeah. So like. If you can, you should be able to play all this stuff with it, with it, with it, even when it hurts, with a clean sound, you know. Um. You know, like, I just would... Try what, what, what is, like, a pattern that you're doing? Okay, like, this is blues. Like, yeah. You could you could you could do like my probably my most often used lick that that people have have, have seen me do a million times and I and uh, I probably do it way too much but it is a great way just to sort of free free my hands up is um, this one uh, um, okay which is which is just groups one two three four five six yeah it's like the Eric Johnson and then. in the QC. Okay, so you know what's crazy though is you're you're getting through multiple groups of strings really quickly where there's sometimes there's only one note on a string. So like if you're do you is that first string start with one note? Yeah, and here's the thing. It's an upstroke. So you're doing Okay, that's what I was going to ask. What are you starting? So on? check it out. If you can't do it if it's not an upstroke. I can't do it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I 
can't do it slow. Okay, so you end, end on an upstroke and start. If I try to do that on a downstroke, let's see if I can even do it. I can't do it, but it's... The, it's, it's, it's the timbre is different, too. Yeah. Yeah, I can't get it this buttery. Yeah, totally. Okay, so... Um, I showed uh, your buddy Kenny Wayne okay. this lick, uh, just jo joking around, and I've I've talked about this on my channel. And people have actually made videos about this lick. You're probably sick of seeing me do it, but it's a really good practice lick. Okay, to get your string skipping thing lined up, this is a tricky oh, lick. Okay, yeah. so you take fifths, right? Okay, and you do another fifth, and then you do you could do another fifth. But sometimes I'll do like a a, a minor six. I'll go like. That's a hard lick. It goes against everything intuitively that you feel. Do it real slowly. You do it with me. I'll do I, it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not yeah. plugged in. Uh, I just remember like, like an idiot. Okay, so here, here's, <laughs> I'll play it with me softly. Okay. And uh, I'll play, I'll turn the guitar down too. Check it out. Oh, sorry. A, root fifth. And then do the same thing. G and D. Okay. And then E and C. So you go. Yeah. And then you go and back. Then, is that two hits? No, one hit. So you go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then I slide it around, like like we jo we joke around with the sound checks when, when Kenny Wayne's playing with yeah. the ears. We always goof around with this lick. It's just, uh, you can do it a million different ways, but it's just, <laughs> it's a funny lick. It sounds really cool though. You could change it into stuff like, like I could do stuff like. And you do like. Yeah. You were saying, what's another uh, pattern? That's that's an easy pattern. Uh, one that I stole from uh, an old Steely Dan song called Booty Sapfa was uh, Jeff Baxter. He does a lick like, you know, he goes like. Um, yep. Like that. And I just thought those groups of three, Steve Morse does this too, uh, groups of three per string. Falls beautifully. You can mix it up a little bit. But you can get some really burning stuff going with that, like, you know. You know. You know what's really weird? I find myself doing is like i um i injured his finger really badly uh probably about 15 years ago where i couldn't play guitar for like six months oh my god it was really bad almost cut it off and i had to relearn how to play not using this finger so i was doing sessions just using these three fingers oh come on and man i i learned all these you know crazy ways to finger things and people always say man you have the weirdest pinky you know I think a lot of it comes from that. Like I played for months and months with, without a middle finger. And I'll find myself like, most people would just be like, right? Uh -huh. but I'll be like, skipping the middle finger. It's weird, right? It's totally weird, right? <laughs> That's all from that injury. How do you mute? Uh, make sure the other strings aren't ringing out when you uh, pick like oh, that. Uh, let's see. I'm using my thumb here. Okay. Thumb mute, I'm hanging over. Sure. That's all totally just subconscious. Okay. Know. Now, um, I, you know, I have. We were just joking around. I have. I have. Uh, you got the head headshot. There we oh, go. I'm there it is. Yeah. There it is. I've got shred guilt, right? Shred, <laughs> shred, shred shame. Right. You know. I'm always embarrassed to, you know, but, but why? Yeah, I don't know, man. You know what I think? You know what I think it is? Yeah. Um, I think it's this town. 
You think so? I do because there's uh, like Rob McNally too. Yeah. Uh, I remember it. like uh, doing a bunch of videos with him, and then one morning he was I was over there early, and he was warming up, and he was doing the most terrifying like <laughs> '80s guitar stuff, and I'm like, "Bro, where did that even come from?" And he's like, "I can't do." Yeah. I, I, he's like, he said the same thing. He, he does it to stay sharp, so right. if, if he needs it, but right. like you can't use it. You can't really, yeah. Well, in town, I, you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, on I on a uh, on a session or yeah, whatever, usually on yeah, uh, 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 Americana record yeah. or something. Yeah, you did. It on your uh if, if is your birthday gig out there yeah, yeah there's yeah, a uh yeah. you were very restrained and melodic and beautiful and then there was one last song where you freaking oh, yeah, just ripped yeah, the cover yeah, off yeah. the ball <laughs> don't be ashamed to do that <laughs> here's another one okay uh let's see if i can do this slow all right this is a good one uh, okay i'm just gonna show you a couple of these all right okay and first of all uh please i, I really want to stress uh the I'm trying to explain this whole wrist thing. Okay, if you find yourself making a straight line right right up this arm, where where your, your arm is moving in a straight line, that's where all the tension comes from. There has to be a separation. Like my arm is basically staying still mm -hmm. up here, and all this stuff is coming from the wrist motion. See, like I see a lot of guys when they're playing, they're like they're like the whole. Is arm, your you know? is your wrist? Yes, it's side. It's going side. Is it, side. Is it bent this way though? Uh, or is it straight? Is your arm straight and you're going like this? Or is it bent a little bit like this? Okay, so you have a little bit of a tilt in your wrist this way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, my, my, I got that finger lifted up from all the years of playing Stratocaster. Oh, you're saying I Yeah, you don't hear the knob. But that's all, <laughs> that all just subconscious <laughs> shit. Right? Totally. Yeah. So, um, so like, there is a bit of anchoring. People ask me a lot about the anchoring. Or how, how are you anchoring that? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't really know what to tell them. So if this camera angle helps figuring out what I'm doing, that's great. Yeah, you can. Halloween theme. I, mean, I talk about Jump that. slowly what you're doing. Yeah, the doubles. Take two notes. Any two notes, right? And just jump back and forth. Sometimes skip a string. That's hard. Bro. Skip a string. And literally, dude, I could do that all day long. It never gets tired. It's actually more relaxing than strumming. Yeah. Like, and, and like, I see people just tire out when they're trying to play fast and they're like, they're all worn out. And it's like, it shouldn't be like that. How long did it, it take you to be that. able to relax and- That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, it's not gonna happen overnight. I, I yeah. would literally sit on the couch and drive people nuts playing a guitar unplugged well, for decades. Yeah, okay, so that, that, that's what I really kind of want to hammer in is because obviously yeah. Yeah. you have a natural uh, inclination to guitar. Like yeah. you, you obviously were born to play guitar. Thank you, man. But <laughs> <laughs> you play a lot, like all, you play a lot. Yeah, I play a lot, and like I'll it, work all day in the studio. And yeah, come home and play at night. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so at your house, like Unless you I got are the kids. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, you I gotta have priorities. Yeah. Um, I don't play at all. Hundreds of thousands of hours, I probably at this I, point. I figured it out one day, like the whole ten thousand hours thing. Yeah. That's only a couple of years. To oh, totally. I mean, I'm up in probably forty, fifty thousand an hour range. Oh, easy at this point. And it's like, and I feel like you know that's just because I love doing it. I I always loved playing, even when I was a kid, you know. And uh, it never seemed like work to me, you know. Boy, some days feel like work. Oh hell yeah! I mean, so yeah. let me ask you this: So you've uh, you're kind of a savant when it comes to uh, learning songs. Yeah. in that way because because you like you'll sit here and you'll play it's just yeah. song after song after yeah. song <laughs> Nine songs. yeah picking wise can you think of a couple of songs that helped you kind of really dial in start to dial in your technique yeah okay yeah good question um yeah silly things you guys would laugh at uh 
Well, obviously, it's not funny because look at how good you are. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you guys know, everyone knows I'm a big, you know, everyone thinks I'm a prog music freak, but sure. I, really the only three bands I like are Yes, Genesis, and Jethro Tull. Okay. The rest of it I could, couldn't care less about. But there was a, you know, Steve Howe was a huge influence on me, and, and he was a cool, cool player. Not exactly like a, like a shredder, sure. but he could, he could, he could, he was very versatile. Yeah. He could do a lot of different stuff. But there was like, there was a song that on an album that everybody hated called Drama that was, was because of John Anderson wasn't singing on it. And uh, there's a song in there called Tempest Fugit. And the, the main riff is like. And at one point he starts going. That's a cool riff. Okay, okay, check it out. He goes. And then the same thing down the holes up. Okay, so. Kind of, you know, it's, that's a killer finger workout too. yeah it's that's great finger starting workout. from yeah. that pinky and the percussiveness of it yep i was attracted to that i, I like i mean i love when it's like hard alternate picking is very percussive mm -hmm. that's very cool sound to me uh you know steve morris was the only guy that did that there was there was other guys that did that uh, who are some other flat see, pickers uh, let's see i'm having a hard time thinking of some right now, but there there are definitely some uh I'll be back to you on that. Okay. Eddie, Eddie didn't really do that. No. Eddie, Eddie was very Legato. Yeah, very uh, Legato. And uh, amazingly fast. And, and uh, he was a big believer in that whole stuff. Like, you know, you know, hammer ons, right? Oh, totally. He was great at that. Um, and uh, a lot of the Shredder guys, like Holdsworth, was, was all about the Legato barely. You, you see how barely touching the strings, man. It's a sound though. It's very. It's, I, it's, I can yeah. see from being a, a horn player how you wouldn't want the um, the percussiveness of all the notes. Right. It's more fluid, like a right. horn, when you do right. the hammer ons and pull offs. Who's another guy that played real percussively? Um, oh, there's that. there's some, but yeah, I just always thought that was a cool sound, and and I don't know why. I I, I just I just thought that's what I want to play. I want to play like that. And uh, I'm not suggesting that everybody do that. I mean, a lot of people really love that legato thing, and that's great. Um, I used to play like that when yeah. I was a kid. I, I remember I, I was like when I was real young. I wanted I was in hair bands and I wanted to be a shredder, and I could really do that legato stuff really good. And I completely stopped playing like that. I don't play like that at all. I, I can't even really remember how to do it anymore. But I, there was a time when I was really into that. Yeah, and I, I see the value of it. Um, but you know, at this point. I suppose my style is more like a bluegrass picker on an electric. Okay. At this point, you know, because you know how those guys are—they just—they yeah, really deliberately pick, pick every note, and it's very loud and proud, right? And that's a cool thing. So, um, well, you can't get that same uh, feel out of an acoustic. I mean, you can do hammer yeah. and plus, but the the volume isn't yeah. as consistent, right? Now, uh, uh, one uh, little twist on all this, like, okay. like. Um, bring it on home yeah like we um we do i talk a lot about about my while i'm holding the pick there's a whole bunch of other shit going on with this hand okay, okay. like uh all right all that stuff right so You know, you got all this stuff like like I'm big on the open string uh, accompanying the note that I'm picking. Like so like Okay, slow that way down. Do that so this is super slow. Yeah, okay, here the Billy Gibbons type thing. So like you take a blues like which is a cool lick. And then you you just take your ring finger okay sneak it down in there and hit that open g string accompanying each one of those notes
to go to the key of E and I'm going to use the B string. Let's check this out. It's like a dead note that just kind of goes with everything. So if you can get real clever about what this tonic note is doing in, in, in the scale, like so. Are you having to, hold on one second, are you having to like shift your grip? Because that's like, you're, you're being able to get that well, string good, open. That's a good question. Okay, great. Okay, <laughs> good. So that's another thing. Like, oh man, I'm so glad you brought that up. Boy, that's something I've never talked about, and that it really needs to be talked about. So, like, you should practice where you where you where you get open strings in. Still going. Like it hasn't died yet. Yeah. You know, like so. I'll try to. I'll just keep keep strings open. Let let these notes be. Okay, so you shift your whole grip. Yeah. Because you, you're not with your thumb anymore. You go, you totally move this way. Exactly. Standing up, standing the fingers up more like in a classical. How do you do that when you're standing up playing? Uh, it's tougher. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I do have a tendency to wear the guitar pretty low on the strap. Yeah. So do you have to shift like like if you're playing bit. do you shift? I, I will if I'm playing something real complicated, I'll I'll pull the guitar up a little bit. Okay. But yeah, uh, so these types of uh playing scales with open strings on the top, you know. You could you could you could take like a E major, right? Keep the keep the B and the E with your two fingers. Are you able to do your your picking up and down do that? Of course you can. <laughs> Damn you! Now check this out. Check this out. This is pretty gnarly. Check this out. Like if you, you the, the 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 tonic open string doesn't always have to be a root or a fifth. You can get tricky with it. Like let's let's say we were playing like um, C sharp. Okay. Which nasty blues. Okay. I'm going to take the B string and I'm going to use it on the, as a dominant seven. Okay, check this out. Too nasty, right? same thing in the key of A, like using your G string, like the, the G is the dominant seven of A, so, so you'd be like. So like in the key of uh, F sharp, the oh, high yeah, E. Slow down, Dude, give, give them a couple licks, okay, like slow. A couple licks in A, okay. Okay, tilt your head back and do that somewhere so they can get the top. Monkey grips. Okay, dig this. Like, if you got, you know, I have these giant monkey hands, which, which, but like. <laughs> he does. It's not fair. Yeah, but. Yeah, <laughs> like, uh, if you get that used to having that thumb, yeah. what you're really playing with is, the, is it's not this part, it's this. Which this, is very interesting because it's squishy. Like, squishy, how do you, yeah. like, are you really yeah. pressing down pretty good? 
Mm. It's hard to get a pure note. Yeah, for sure. Like you just get, you just get. Because there's also, no, it's not. It's mostly like uh, muscle and flesh. Whereas, right. the, whereas the other one gets the bone. Exactly, right? and and it's you gotta, you gotta get just just right to be in tune. I, in the old days when I first started doing that, I would have a tendency to bend it sharp. Down, yeah. yeah, but like if you got if you, pure notes, right? So like I'll just try to play anything I would play. while that's held down, right? So like. <laughs> and sometimes I'll switch fingers just to get, a, get below. So you can play above the tonic, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can play below. So like. I, if, I'm, if I'm above the 10th fret, I play like this. If I'm below it, I switch to this finger. People don't uh, use that f fifth position or whatever you want to call it, the one that's below the tonic yeah. very much. And it's such, it's a, such a freaking cool. gem, dude. It is. I mean, there's a lot of amazing stuff. Yeah. There. I mean, I like all this stuff. Like... above The old piano licks where you go sliding off the black keys, like you know. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, that's that's another thing. So, what was your question? <laughs> uh, okay, so you uh, the you had to manipulate your grip, like yeah, the yeah. angle of your because you're getting those ringing tones without right um, without right. muting out the. Right. And you're bending. That's the crazy part. Is it's not. It's not like you're just getting a note. You're like bending notes, keeping that open right. with your thumb. I mean, right. obviously your hand. Right. Yeah. 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 Tell your head back a little bit. Okay. You got air cam. Okay. And throw them in a little bit every once in a while. So, <laughs> so uh, you that's cutting heads. Yeah, that's full that, crossroads yeah, stuff yeah, right there, man. And uh, like that's thumb stuff. Now, here's a great way to start with that. Okay, okay. just the, the, if you're if you're kind of weird about using your thumb because your guitar teacher didn't teach yeah. you to play that way, just start playing the G chord. Like instead of your typical power chord G being like this, which is like the, which is the one you learn after uh -huh. you get rid of. Sure. Right. Because you, you, you get rid of all the thirds. Yeah. You don't want those thirds when you're playing rock and roll. So, and then the C chord that yeah. everybody uses, right? Yeah. But like, if you take a G chord like this, you use that one, right? Mm -hmm. Where you play your, you got your thumb as your bass, root, fifth, octave, open, fifth, yeah, a tonic. You know, I can honestly say. I remember when the whole thumb thing first really started because I was in the studio trying to play acoustic and and you know how when the microphone's on you in the studio and you're playing acoustic it's so sensitive every string squeak gets picked up because they not only do they put this really sensitive mic on you then they turn the compression all the way yeah, up it's like and everything you play it gets magnified your stomach gurgling everything <laughs> I mean, seriously, you got to be careful of any kind of yeah, no clothing, hitting, yeah. anything. I mean, you know, I, I love when guys that, that don't play in the studio, they're not used to it. They they go, yeah, I can play acoustic on that. And they go in and they're like, they're hitting the guitar with the pick. They don't realize, because yeah. they've never recorded themselves. Sure. They're, they're, you know, they're hitting the sound hole with the pick mm -hmm. and something. You can hear it just going yeah. you know, in the background, like tennis shoes in the dryer. 
so so like <laughs> yeah yeah so I, like that's what it sounds like so i was like trying to like a really hard chord to grab on an acoustic okay. if you're just playing you know your typical cowboy chords going to an f the traditional way is a big move it's like when you're playing piano and you all of a sudden jump to a whole new position like mm -hmm. if you're playing all these these are all like related look how close they are i'm barely moving right but if you go to that f that's yeah, a huge a move, yeah. right? So I was trying to find ways to play an F chord without making a moose. So I ended up with that, mm -hmm. which is a really cool voicing, like one, three, three, oh, one, three. Yeah, such a good sound. And it's also very quiet. Like you, you don't, you don't hear any finger squeaks when you're getting that. You could be like, I'll try to do the same thing with the Cowboy F. Not only is it really hard to do, it's noisy. Okay. And it, and it really, you can hear it on the mic sure. in a bad way. So that's when I really started de developing that whole thumb thing and like getting that low F to be really in tune with that thumb. Yeah, well, yeah, it's tricky. You know, it's tricky. So so then I started thinking, man, you could do a lot with that. You could do like my first forays and that were all just like just playing a shuffle. See when I could pull off while well, keeping that mm -hmm. thumb going, and then it became, wow! I basically voice every chord I've got like that with because I've got this extra cool digit down there that can grab all these weird notes, like, like you know, playing super weird chords that you would never think of, like, like, um, like stuff like this, you know, like, like this is a B minor, mi B minor nine sus, right? From low to high, seven nine nine seven five nine. Okay. This is no way on earth to play that unless you use your thumb. Yeah. You can't. There's no there's way no, you yeah, can't. You can't do it. You can't do it. So and that finger. Then I became like, intoxicated with all these chords that you can do that with. You know, it's so like. And then it was like all these chords that you could make with your thumb without using your finger with four fingers really started becoming attractive to me yeah and it blends in really well with my whole piano approach to, oh hell yeah you know, so so like all that stuff you know that's where it all came from f sharp major over g over e weird stuff but that's where it all came from and uh and then it became part of the thing that's it so so uh I'm, I'm not suggesting that everybody play like that again you know if you like that sound it's you know that's a good way to start just grabbing your, your you know what i appreciated about it though yeah. is um it gives you a, a home base to find melodies around it where, totally. where a lot of people um they just practice scales and they're, they're not hearing any other yeah. tone in the background to play against right. Right. when you do that totally. you can really start to like oh what are the notes that sound cool over an a or whatever right you know, and it also has come very handy. And if I ever goof around and try to work up a little melodic arrangement of a classic tune, mm -hmm. like every once in a while on my channel, I'll just pick some random old song and I'll play the vocal part. Oh while yeah, right. Playing the bass. And then it, that thumb <laughs> thing is is crucial. Like like you know, name a song. You know, like pick any old song, like anything. Anything. Yeah, just uh, anything. Uh, yellow and brick road. Okay, so like, let's see. It, so like if you were gonna Okay, so like I'd be like That's part. Can yeah, I ask you a question? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> How long has it been since you played that song? Never, I've never played it before. I just, okay, so just, so you're at the point yeah. to obviously, I'm, yeah. and I'm, I'm, just, I'm asking a question I already know the answer to. But the ability for you to be able to hear that and just play that right off the bat and get the notes right, right. 
That, uh, I think that's what people don't uh, understand is they can see somebody like you and just be wowed by what you can do without without realizing, like you said again, how much time right. you put it. Because oh. you cannot do that oh, dude. unless you've played a million dude, hours. Yeah. It, it, and it goes for any instrument, piano yeah. and all that stuff. Man, and dude, I still feel like a tourist when I get around guys like Gordon Moat. I mean, yeah, I can do a bit of this stuff, but you like he Who's can Gordon Moat, piano player. Okay, he can re he can take a he could take that song uh -huh. that I'm fishing around trying to find the actual melody, and he can do a completely reharmonized version of it, where he he plays the song in a way you'd recognize it, but it's completely different chords, you know, and on the fly. Isn't that crazy? And then do it in any key you want. <laughs> so like, believe me, man, I am not in any way acting like. Uh, like I'm, I'm a master of this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm like in awe of people that can really do it. You know, all these people like Jacob Collier, they have these amazing ears that can reharmonize things. That's probably where I'm headed. Mm -hmm. Like if I, if people say, what, what would you like to get? What's some shit you can't do now that you'd like to do? Mm -hmm. I would like to get deeper into that, being able to totally reharmonize things on the fly. Well, and um, this is something I've said to everybody that I've talked to you, like over years of, you know, and, and seeing you play, um, you and Rob mm -hmm. McNally, yeah. you guys don't play riffs. You, you, you can, right. but like you, when you sit down and play nine times out of 10, you're playing something musical oh, yeah. and like with chords, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're really constantly working. And I think everybody, you know, it's, it's yeah. so easy to like learn some blues licks and just right. practice blues phrasing, but right, right. you're practicing playing songs and right. chords and chord melodies right. all that's the it. time. That's it. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it really yeah. like, yeah. I think if, 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 and us doing stuff together, I think if that's what we can kind of impart. And that's what I, that's mm -hmm. one of the main reasons I've wanted to work with you is because it's, um, it's about music. It's totally. not about totally. anything else. I mean, that totally. you have ability that's beyond belief. Thank you, man. But to be able to just do that right yeah. on the fly yeah, yeah. and have never played that yeah. song before, right. Right. that's what people should aspire to be able to do to where you can, you know your instrument so well uh, musically, not technically. Right, and the chord changes. Yeah, yeah. that you can just yeah. hear it. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's where it gets to. So the, the picking yeah. stuff obviously is awesome There's and absolutely do it it's a tool in the bag yeah where this is <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. we've burned out the cameras they can't take it anymore it's right but we um, got one good one left yeah we got one good one left yeah. so just just make sure after you see stuff like this it's a tool in the bag it's right you know what I mean? Sure. And, and there's nothing it's actually really cool and nothing to be ashamed of it's amazing absolutely do that too right but don't forget when you hear this guy and he's not doing this, 95% of the time, he's playing something musically and, and quarterly, and, and that's just one of the things he has and he's able to do. That's right. You know what the I mean? Thing. So take, take this as a tool that he's gonna show you how, but there's a lot of other stuff coming your way. So make sure you leave us in the comment section down below other things you'd like to see. I've, I've worked around some of the world's best guitar players, and I'm not just saying this because you're here. No, dude. That you're, we, he's unique. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. He's going to do things that you're just like, how is that even possible? <laughs> Don't let it intimidate you. Let it inspire you. Because this is what this whole thing that we're doing, and the whole reason that I'm bringing Tom in to do stuff too is, it's not so much like, wow, look at Tom. It's let it inspire you to, to go to the next level within yourself, whatever that level is. Yeah. Let it be the inspiration to take you to that next place. Yes, and then the next place after that, and the next place after that. And, and, and steal my gigs. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're, let's just face it, we're never going to be Tom, but you can be the best version of yourself and that's the it. most musical version of yourself, and that's what this is all about. So let that's us it. know in the comment section below what you want to see. Check out his channel. It is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Be nice. <laughs> yeah, be nice. Because we, we, we like ni nice people. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for checking it out. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for having me, dude. Absolutely.